The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, in his unique dispensation of the church age, wherewith we have been given this great privilege in serving that great Lord, to have a great power to dig out, and not to be ashamed, but rather to tell, Lord, you have given me like a drudge to dig out, and I will dig out the truth by the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And I am readily available to do thy work is the great purpose of a pastor teacher, wherewith he has been made a steward so that he could be blameless before God and as well as men, as before men in a pure consciousness. And that is what we can have always. What Lord has revealed to us through the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when we are in His fellowship in learning the Word of the Lord and in knowing this unique spiritual life through the mystery doctrine of the church age, the same thing we need to implement to the hearers. We cannot change. We cannot tell like the steward who could change from 100 olive oil jars to make it 50 or for some 100 grain-fed instruments into 80. No, we cannot change. We need to be faithful in rightly dividing the word of the Lord. We need to be faithful in telling to the congregation, absolutely, the pre-canon period, the post-canon period, whether they believe it, like it or not. If the majority of the people don't believe, then ignore them. Your work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord because you have not the majority of our people over here in abominations, which I call because of denominations, but rather you have multiple angels looking along you. What are you doing? And we are here to answer back, Lord, not to these people. But in return, they are under our care so that we can rightly train them up. If they are negative, it is because of their ne negative volition. Wherewith Satan thinks the basis for this angelic conflict will be purely the essence of God. In his essence, will he compromise? In his essence, will he not do? Exactly the same thing today in our lives. If you want, you can compromise with a negative volition, not, in take, not taking Bible doctrine. And if you want, you can ignore taking this doctrine. That's as simple as that with Lord. We cannot play games with Christ. It is your negative volition. If you want, you take. You can take. If you want to ignore, you can ignore. If you want to follow the gimmicks, you can follow the gimmicks. If you want to elevate the suffering by going through miracles, healings, and tongues, which is no way possible for you all to do today after the completion of canon, then you can follow that. Lord doesn't go against your negative volition. But the self-discipline of the soul demands the daily intake of Bible doctrine. It is not gibberishly, emotionally jumping around, dancing around, and speaking in tongues. It is purely the intake of the word of the Lord from the right mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you can learn the word and the truth shall set you free. That's as simple as that. Greater our failure in understanding this simple truth, greater will be our life that we are ignoring God's truth. And that is what it is happening today in our churches. The pastor teacher is not faithful to his stewardship. If, his, if he was faithful in this minute things to dig out and to have the strength under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to display what is from the world and the new, the reality of this mystery doctrine of the church age, then he's a right steward. He's a faithful steward. That tell definitely what are the spiritual gifts permanently and what are the spiritual gifts defunct which have gone. And when you, Lord, uses you as a trumpet to blow, Lord uses as a watchman to warn the people, when you are only not doing your work properly, how can Lord really get the reality of His glory? And what for He need to pay for you here on this earth? What not He need to pay? And what for the reason that He needs to keep you alive on this earth? To enjoy His resources into vain? To make your belly as your God? Do you know what? These men are very wise in this earth. If they want to buy an article, if they want to buy something which is really worth, they want to sit and calculate and estimate, is it really worth of so much or not? So what do they do? They call the best expert. 
And they will say, I am purchasing some scrap to this market. So, how much it could be worth off? They will take an expert opinion. And if they say this could be the worth, then they are going to pay only that much of worth. Now, keeping this in mind, if you are a pastor teacher, and if Lord has given you the responsibility in rightly dividing the word of the Lord and taking the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher so that when you have been faithfully prepared and taking from the original exegesis or isogical categorical expression of the word through the dispensing technique of dispensations, if you are really doing that to show forth the manifold wisdom of God and to honor his name above his and to honor his word above his name, will not Lord really scan you out and tell how much you are worthy to be paid? But then to what does the Bible teach? We need to say that we are unprofitable slaves, Lord. We have done that which was our duty to be done. That is what we need to say, right? But this steward in Luke chapter 16, he tells, after my stewardship, I don't have anywhere to go. I need to go back to the same houses if I can give them right now some concession, right now some compromise. Therefore, our Lord said, the generation of these people are more brighter than the generation of the light. That is what Satan cunningly does through the work of a pastor teacher. To compromise, to take the things pertaining which are not at all in Bible doctrine. To compromise and to tell to you that this could be the procedure, that this could be the procedure. No, you cannot compromise with the softness of this world. What the Bible tells if there is no woman preacher, no woman preacher. If the Bible tells no tithes, no tithes. After the completion of canon, the permanent spiritual gifts which are into force, they have to be, and that is what you need to take. That is what you need to take. The pastor, teacher, evangelist, mercy, helps, administration. That's what you need to go. Because one fine day you will be appearing at the judgment seat of Christ, wherewith our Lord tells, because of your own account, you are not working there as a steward. Because of my account, you are working there. And when you are not faithful for my account, how can you be faithful tomorrow if I can give you something which is of your own? And to say, the imputed righteousness of us, which Lord has given to us, when we are not faithful for that imputed righteousness, which belongs to God, it is not our own, it has been given by God. And when you are not faithful to meet that standards of righteousness in our, in our Christ, how can you be tomorrow faithful to that greater glory of mansions built for you? That's why Lord has given for us right now, how we are going to build up your house that is left to you. Therefore, your own account will be whether you build it with gold, silver, or precious stones, or wood, they are stubble. A day will come to be judged in fire, a fire wherewith you will be noted for your rewards, what you are going to take. And we are not faithful to the one which has been handed to our hands by the mental minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, from the bona fide gift of, gift of the head of the department of the church. How can we be faithful for other things in this world? And little things, least thing, least time. A time when you think it will just pass away from your mind. 30 years, 40 years after salvation, just prolong like that. It is not a big work. The days will run so fast you can't even understand. The burden laid down upon your shoulders will be so large. If you go for weekly ones to preach the sermon. Therefore, it has to be daily renovation of your thinking, day by day process. Therefore, Second Corinthians 4.16, the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed, renewed, renewed. And that is what it is going to happen, whether you believe it, take it, consider it or not. Dear brethren, ponder over these things, as we shall continue tomorrow, because the wind is strong. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life, in order to telling to Lord God the Father that to believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the great matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, to get into remembrance of the truth that Lord has communicated for us by a Mimnisco, Lord of doctrine. So that, dear brethren, you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And whereas for the pastor teachers, the great matter is to grow up in grace. So that the grace he could be given for him to dig out like a drudge and get the truth. To carry Sothon Lagan to herald the word. Because for the diamonds from my witnesses wherewith he has been called. The diamonds from my witnesses, number one. 
indwelling trinity the dharma to my witnesses number two bible in our hands the dharma to my witnesses number three the witnesses being our hearers and if there are no hearers dear brother not worry besides nature the entire angelic host is our witnesses and we do have the number one witness being the indwelling trinity lord god the holy spirit and why do we need to worry our work is to do and cleanly nakedly show forth the truth as it is because in my country like india there is gautama buddha which they call or gumteshwara who says he is a god that's why they have sculptured his image nakedly including his front and back view of his male organs they say why because he is a god he has to be shown nakedly to the people even we when we are having the true living god as our work the past teachers have to show forth nakedly the truth nakedly the truth from the original languages of the scriptures not to worry about the softies not to compromise like that she would in luke 16 and to be faithful in little things ponder over these things we shall continue tomorrow father we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to fellowship with you through thy word we pray that lord god the holy spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it us a blessing and challenge sovereign lord for we ask it in christ's name father amen